Hello and welcome back to The Piano Student. This is what, episode three? Yeah. Yeah, so in the first episode I was teaching Matt the treble and the bass clef. And in the second episode I tested him on the treble clef and he did a lot better of a job than I expected to be perfectly honest. So let's see if you can keep that up today. The whole idea is we're gonna go through the first piece of music and maybe move on to the second or third depending on how well he does here. Yeah, and it's probably the first time, I guess, you're reading a piece of piano music? Oh, absolutely. First time piano music, 100%. Yeah, so that's piece two. Let's get rid of that. Okay. <laughs> if you want to play this piece of music yourself, there is a download link in the description where you can do so. So, first of all, what's on there, if anything, yeah. is confusing? Um... Or is it a case of, you can actually recognise everything on there, it's just going to take a bit of time to work it out? It's going to take a bit of time to work it out. So I can see those are... Dun, 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 yeah, dun, perfect. Dun, dun, something like that. Um, so that's okay. It, 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 yeah, it's just going to be the notes. But luckily, they're mostly towards the bottom, which means I haven't got to go far in those mnemonics to work it out. Exactly. <laughs> so there that's quite nice. So this is lesson one of my piano series. So you can just watch the lesson yourself and and learn pretty much at the same time as Matt is. That's the idea. And uh, go on, let's give it a go. Let's see if you can work out those notes. Right. Cool. Okay. So what is the first note in this piece? C. C. And specifically, what C is it? It is the middle C. It is the middle C, the only unique name on the piano, so whereabouts is middle C on the piano? Probably going to be in the middle somewhere. Yeah, so find the middle and find the closest C to it. Right. So I remember from when I did look at this before, that's a D. That is a D, and I've just realised I haven't actually taught you the notes on the piano. No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but... We should probably whiz through that first. I know that is a C there. Okay, good. That is a C. I'll quickly whiz through what the notes are on the piano, yes. just before we jump into <laughs> this then. Okay, so this is rapid fire. Cool. You've got to be on it. Yeah. Yeah? So, imagine the whole piano is a street. Yeah. Yeah? All the way along, it's a big long road. Yeah. Yeah? On this street, we've got houses. Yeah. Groups of three black notes. Yeah. And then we've got dog houses. Groups of two black notes. Okay, yeah. Yeah? I can see that. Inside the dog house lives the dog. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? So you've got lots of dogs yeah. everywhere. Yeah? On the left of the dog house, you've got the cat. Lots of C's everywhere. Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah. Weird street, but on the right of the dog house, you've got the elephant. <laughs> Fingers crossed that'll stick in your head. <laughs> I think it will. Yeah. So okay. the dog house, dog, on the left is a cat, on the right is an elephant. Okay. Yeah. So if you have a house, at the front of every house, you've got the front door. Yeah. And at the back of every house, you've got the back door. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Front door, back door. And then the house is living, uh, Gary. <laughs> and cool. he, and yeah. he's eating an avocado. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody white girl. <laughs> God, so many white girls on the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we got the house, there's the front door, there's the back door, and Gary's eating a Blooming big avocado. Nice. It's reaching from him to the back door. Cool. He's got a dog, a cat, and an elephant. Exactly. Cool. So, realistically, that has taught you every single white note on the piano. Oh, yeah. So, what note's that one? That is a B. No, it's not. Wait, it's not sorry, no, that's an E. <laughs> I that's an E. That's the back of the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that one. That is a avocado. There you go. That one? That is Gary. Uh, lowest note on the piano. That is. A bit more difficult to work out. That is another avocado, isn't it? It is! Yeah. Well done, highest note on the piano. That is a cat. It is indeed. Look at that. Yeah. So, then on top of that, you've got all of the black notes, but really simply, all it is, is if it's a flat, you read the notes going down the piano. If it's sharp, you read them going up. So, what I mean by that is, every black note could be called one of two things. Yeah. Either a C sharp, yeah. because you're going up the piano, or a D flat, because you're going down the piano. Cool. That relates to everything. So this going along. has always confused me. I'm sure we'll cover it later on. But I've yep. always wondered what is the point in having a flat when you've just got a C sharp? Um, because there are different scales, mm. and basically there's a formula to all of them that ends up requ requiring that. I know it. It's, it's not a very good answer, mm. but it's only something that you discover later on. It makes sense that there's sharps and flats. Yeah, I figured that would be the case. Just I've never understood it, and I've never been able to get a pro like answer for it. So. Well, 
it, there's an order of things. There's an order of scales. So, so when you read sharps, you've got one sharp, two sharps, three sharps, and you read them going along. That makes a lot of sense on yeah. the page. Yeah. But if you were to include, if you were to say that every flat is now written as a sharp as well, suddenly you've got these sharps and flats basically almost in the same place, meaning different things, oh, potentially. Right. And it just becomes a whole mess. So sharps and flats is easier to read, basically. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. We'll go with that for now. Cool. So, back to the piece, now that I've realised I've actually taught him the notes on the piano. That's fine. <laughs> and hopefully it's actually taught you something too. We've got the clock. You said it starts with middle C. Yeah. Where, whereabouts is middle C on the piano. Exactly. And if you have a look at that note on the page, yeah. what else is there going on well, right yeah. on that note? There's a one there. There's a one there. Yeah. That tells you what finger to use. Oh no. And thumb is always one. Okay. Yeah? So, best practice is every time you see a finger marking, yeah. you get your hand in position on that note and on that finger marking, and you use the rest of your fingers to cover each note consecutively after that. Right. Okay. Yeah? So, give that a go. Get all your fingers resting on the white keys leading in order. There you go. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was weird. You, you, it's, it's, your hands are so much bigger than mine, they naturally want to just spread it's out. Just, I feel like that would be more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so yeah. compact. You know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to really frustrate you. What? You've got to play up and down. No, I hate doing this. Without lifting your fingers off the keys. <laughs> oh. Bum. I was pretty impressed. Okay, maybe maybe a little less messy. Let's turn it up a bit so we can actually hear you. Or hit the keys a little bit harder. That's pretty good. He's managing to do it with keeping his fingers on the keys. Same thing left hand. You bum. What well, up? <laughs> up and down. Oh. <laughs> ah. I'll give you that, I'll give you that. Okay, that was clearly too easy. Both hands at the same time. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> that is absolutely. I feel like it'd be easy going. That's well easy because it's symmetrical. That's called contrary motion, what you just did there. Is it? Yeah, it's very fancy. It's called easy. Yeah. Off. <laughs> oh. So careful of your thumb that was hovering yeah. away there. Oh, I can't keep my thumb planted there. It wants to lift. <laughs> <laughs> Normally people find it's actually their little finger and forefinger that go. Really? People just play it and their hand just twists, just like that. But you're, considering that you're not doing that at all, yeah. you're actually in a really good place. I don't know why that wants to go up. I'm, I'm trying to rush it, that's why. Right, come on. hovering a bit but but I'll give you that's fine yeah I do find it easier to lift them slightly I can get like a bounce on it that way yeah I mean there's an argument that that a lot of classical musicians do it so that their fingers lift up quite high and then come back down again mm. and that gives a lot of a lot of uh, bounce and a lot it does, of precision, it like potentially. Yeah. But the, the problem that arises from that is when you're reading a piece of music, the best thing you can do is not look at your fingers. Mm. If you don't need to look at your fingers, and you can be confident where they're positioned, don't look at them. Mm. But if you haven't trained your hand to stay in that place and your fingers to stay on those keys, mm. it's very easy for them to drift off by one note or so, uh, and then sure. suddenly you're hitting the wrong finger in the wrong note. That's true. Yeah. So it's if you can just get it down right now, but you don't move them. I think part of it is also be being so able to sort of like tap a rhythm as you do it. 
this. It's easier to do it that way. Yeah, he says while getting it wrong. <laughs> but if I do the same thing where I'm lifting my fingers off the keys slightly, yeah. look how much my wrists move. Yeah. Not very much. Yeah. When you're doing it, your wrists come into action. Okay, so keep them planted. Keep them planted. If you can keep control on your wrists, that's ideal. That's something for you to practice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, obviously, obviously I actually told you to do something that was going to end up being quite difficult. Good, that's all right. Yeah, then. so I didn't <laughs> expect you to get that straight away. That's fine then. So you're in a good place. Um, and I realise that we're standing up. It's not exactly ideal, but in this workshop, we, we've got a surface, so we might as well use it. Um, anyways, onto the clock, back to first note. Yep. Thumb is on middle C. The rest of the fingers are covering the other notes. Yeah. Yeah. You know the rhythm. You've yeah. already told me you know the rhythm. So let's see if you can play that first line. Just go straight into it. You can read the notes, just go for it. Don't worry about the BPM on it. Oh, I'm not worried about BPM, no. no. Oh, that was afterwards, wouldn't so, it? Uh, 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 so, wait, wait. Normally when people say, don't worry about the BPM, yeah. they end up going, <laughs> really slowly, because <laughs> they're really working out. Meanwhile, you're going, was that right though? <laughs> I mean, you're going double the speed of a piece that I said with the BPM. Oh, really? Yeah, 120 is not fast. It's just double a second. There you go. Oh, that bit. That, that is literally the top speed that you need, but considering oh. it's the first time you're playing it, you don't need to go at that speed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get this over and done with. <laughs> Well, in which case, we'll go to the bass clap. Yeah. <laughs> go on, give it a go, whole line. Okay. So, whole line, right. Okay. Yeah, whole line, just keep it oh, nice Christ. and even. Hang on, wait, let me work this out. So, I'm going to that finger then, because that would be the elephant. Mm-hmm. Oh, you bum, you've made it go down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, I, ideally, looking at this, I need to be able to keep my hand planted there. Yes. Okay. I, li I like him, what's going on here, you've got a little bit of that action go as you were playing. It's because I've just had my cup of coffee. You're that's very why. posh. Yeah. yeah. Hello. <laughs> so I've worked out I don't need that finger for this. So. You have, actually. <laughs> it will come in later, thankfully. Oh, um, right. But yeah, ideally, fingers sucked to the keys in that one position and you don't look at your fingers the entire line. Okay. In this entire piece, actually. Oh, brilliant. I know, right? I mean, that was spot on. Oh, okay, cool. Genuinely, that, that, <laughs> that was just, okay, okay, second oh. line, let's go. Oh. Oh. That's getting a little bit lazier with the bouncing and your fingers coming off the keys, but, but I'll give you it. That was, again, really good. Okay. If, if you're learning the piano for the first time, don't expect to be as quick and as instant as playing it as he just was. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but he's managed to just get that down with no prior practice. Okay, line three. Okay, so this is Gary now, isn't it? This is Gary. <laughs> okay, all right, Gazza, let's do this. All right, we're going after that. F, so that would mm -hmm. be the old front door, right. Fun. Okay, okay, we're on to line four. I only saw those two at the last minute. <laughs> right. but, but you played them perfectly in time as well. Okay, right, Gary, and then... So, I admit that jump down was a bit of a guess because I didn't do the mnemonic, I just assumed that it was a white note. Well, of course it's going to be a white note because we're only doing white notes at the moment, but that's probably a bad thing. Okay, so... I should probably work it out as I go. Why did you assume that that was going to be the next note down? Because it was the next line down. That's exactly it. Yeah. Genuinely, that's, that's absolutely fine. So we're, we're talking about, what is it, bar, bar 10 and 11, if you've got the music in front of you, because I really don't want to keep putting up the music and telling yeah. people where we're talking about. Uh, bar 10 and 11, and he was saying from the F to the E, he just assumed where it was going to go because it was just on the line below. That's absolutely fine. Okay. Absolutely fine. There's no sharps or flats to suggest otherwise, and it would tell you. 
Oh, there. I suppose it would, wouldn't it? Or it would have told you at the start of a piece and you'd sort of be aware of it. Mm. And maybe you would have made a mistake because you suddenly panicked and forgotten about the flats. Yeah. But given that literally the notes go consecutively from gap to line to gap to line, mm. that's a way to think about it so that you don't have to analyse every single note. Ah, okay. So long as you can recognise that when it's on its own, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So let's take line four from bar 13. Line four from bar... It's, it's just line four. I'm just reiterating oh, where it is for the viewers. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. cool. Right, so this is Gazza again. He is inside the house. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to the front door, which is there. Yeah. And then we're going to the cat. Yeah. And then the dog, and then again the dog. Okay. It works really well, doesn't it? That's it is really good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I can't take credit for it, sadly. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Right, where's Gazza? There he is. Awesome. Cool. Play the whole piece. Because <laughs> realistically, this piece is six lines, and the first two lines are the same as the last two lines. Oh, I see, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. so always watch out for patterns if you can. In my later pieces, I start to put sections. Brilliant. So it's a bit clearer. That's good. Okay. Mm hmm. That's Gaza there. It is Gaza. Oh, yeah. I got it wrong. I'm starting again. Okay. Screw this. knowledge of the bass and from playing that is translating across to the rhythms mm. and the timing and just being able to keep it even because like you made a mistake, I think it was the first time around, you made a mistake up there, well actually you did it as well down here mm. and you just kept going. Yeah. And that's ideal, just keep going, if you make a mistake and it's, and you're fairly confident you can play the whole piece anyway, just keep going, there's no point stopping and starting. Style it out, you can't hear it when you make a mistake on bass. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> yeah. But uh, same thing for when you're actually going to practice a piece of music. If you get to a bit where you're stuck, don't go all the way back to the start again. Make sure you just learn that section that you're stuck at and then go back at the start. Um, it just happens to be that Matt can actually play any one of these lines. It's just happened to be joining them together. It's not working. No. No, it's definitely not. Right. Oh, I swear to God. That's the wrong finger. I am starting again on this. You can slow down a bit if you want. Okay. Well done. Yes. Well done. That that was terrifying. Impressive. That was really <laughs> impressive. Um, and the only the only two comments I could say about that is if, if it was going to be absolutely perfect, your fingers lifted every now and then. Mm -hmm. But I'm being really pedantic for the sake of it. Yeah. And uh, you had to glance down at your fingers in that middle section. Oh, you, you, I did. Your eyes just dropped down a couple of times, and you don't need to. Yeah. 
But overall, I noticed in these sections, you didn't look at your fingers. That's good. So already in a really good place. So I'm thinking that clearly there's not enough pressure because <laughs> it's going too well. You're going to put the metronome on, aren't I'm you? I'm going to put the backing track on. Oh, joyous. So have a little bit of a practice and I'll grab it. Okay, that's good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the backing track on. Boom! That was it. I mean, that was... Boom! I did right. lift up my fingers a little bit though, and I did look down again. It's when I'm going to Gary on 13. Yeah. I don't trust that he's, Gary's on my little finger. Gary is a Gary, tricksy one. He does, he goes all over the place, Gary, but he's on my little <laughs> finger in this case. <laughs> he has a he, he has a wonder. Yeah, he does, he does. So I'm just grabbing the backing track from robharveymusic.com, a little bit of promotion there. <laughs> it is at the top of the page. Just literally open up the first lesson. You'll find the downloads of the clock, you'll find the backing track right there as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play it in the background. Mm -hmm. There are eight hits of, I believe, a s oh no, it's a clock ticking, because of course it's the clock. <laughs> so there's yeah. eight ticks of a clock, yeah. and you start playing. Okay. So, so the clock ticking what? gives you your metronome, basically. Okay. Yeah? Cool. Two bars. I should probably get into position. You probably should. Yeah. Not loud enough. Oh. Mm. You ready? Uh, I think so. Okay. Here we go. Wait, I'll listen to it first. You'll listen to it? Yeah. Go ahead. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay, it's quite obvious when yes. it starts. Yes. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> that is quite obvious, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I was like, am I going to know when it starts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is very intense, you evil man. Oh, yeah, all of them are going to be like this. <sighs> just, just so you're prepared. Okay, we got this. We got this. You got this? Nope. Yep. wrong there you did you did and then add a little bit of a moment there yeah. as well so that was bars 11 uh, no it was bar 12 uh, Matt missed for D's and it was <laughs> line 5 the end of line 5 where just it all sort of fell apart but mm. you brought it back in line 6 mm. and that's obviously ideal if you can actually continuously follow where you are even if you've made mistakes then that's great for you to just be able to jump back in and keep going yes if it was a graded situation, then you would get a lot more marks for being able to find where you are, rather than just have a bit of a meltdown. <laughs> and, just, and just try and fix what you didn't catch up again by speed. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So, I reckon that's a good place to wrap up this episode. Yeah? Yeah, because you... I hate to say it, but it really has impressed me as well. <laughs> but you've got yeah. to be stuck in the end all day now. I know it is. <laughs> I know. Oh, no. But yeah, if you want to learn this piece yourself, there's a link to the piano lesson below. You can find the music on my website along with the backing track too. So in which case, we will see you in the next piano student lesson. See you then. Yeah.